All right, what do we got here? Scattered pods, to the walls, to the walls. All right, children, it's time to go to war. This is not done yet, so we're gonna have to use the old fashioned one here. Oh, he's fast. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> like, screw this, I'm out. <laughs> Big step on trap. See ya. <laughs> All right, GG, little raid. You put a table down there. Oh no, where'd the shield belt go? Did this one have one? We had a few of them with shield belts. No, I was too fast. Oh, well, we'll get the next ones. That does suck. I need two shield belts. I saw that pop up for the ugly corpse. I was like, get him out. All right, there we go. No, Ovum. These are all going to be the children of Claw. <laughs> uh, we're out of mushrooms again with this many. Oh, my God. The growth fats take so much food. It's unreal. I mean, our doors are eating more as well, you know, but, but holy crap. It's actually really nuts how much extra they they eat man growing them in prisoner blood is starting to sound good about now <laughs> all right smooth surface i need to smooth this so we can turn this into a little a little inferno all right i think we'll start using this one start to use this one all right should be mostly good i think What's the light level down here? Uh, it's not too bad, actually. Not too bad. I guess we could go ahead and start using this one. Oh my god, we might end up having to cut this early, or... Yeah, we're gonna have to cut some early. I might have to go hunt. Oh my good lord. They're eating so much. So much. Thought I'd be able to sell some. Yeah, I actually thought I had overproduced. Vat children are hungry little monsters. The Dwarven ones, doubly so, I guess. I'm guessing their genes... Wait, so does the 125% extra hunger rate work even on the Vat children? I mean, it's really feeling like it's, it is, so... I might have to. I might have switched to paste, yeah. It's going to be a fight for mushrooms, basically. You face food... Sure, I usually don't, yeah. We just played a bunch of mountain runs. No, no problem, but... Man, oh man, this one's been, uh, been crazy. In a normal run, these would be uh, enough to support six colonists, roughly, on simple meals forever. On a normal run, each of these rooms at 121 Nutrifungus is about, like, if they get harvested and planted immediately. So let's just say five to five and a half ponds. So we have enough food here for, let's say... 20 to 22 ponds but our dwarves are uh they eat more food and the growth fats are insane so we're only feeding 9 10 11 12 you count the growth fats we're feeding 12 and we have enough stuff here for like 20 to 25 people but man oh man just going through no problem yeah you can now click them and see how much is in it there's 121 nutrifungus yeah 11 by 11 interior 20 nutrifungus crops per colonist for simple meals yeah Six hives. Maybe I take that for the bug meat. How many hives did we just beat? Four? Our last infestation was four hives. They're a six-year-old, so not very good. And they're not a dwarf. Probably won't do it. We need more people in planting, too. Like, we literally only have one person. We put Lilith on there. Convert. Solve cooldown. Where's that little hash monkey? Hashmonkey's sleeping. All right, Hashmonkey, as soon as you get up, you're getting converted to our religion. Well, partially. I'm tired of waiting on you. You're getting up. The insect quest is looking better and better. A healthy vat birth. Another vat, baby. Not vatting a baby until they're three. Uh, you get a mood hit from putting them in a vat. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Someone pick up this vat, baby. That's not somewhere safe. I guess I should make a crib just for when this happens. 
like a in between area for the vat babies when they first pop out. Can you melee block Manhunter? Yes, you can, but the rot stink is a real friggin' issue right now. So, and right now there's no like gas masks and things like that don't prevent against rot stink. I think they should change that, but. Wait, wait, isn't it starving? No baby edible food. Someone else ate all the baby food. Oh my god. All right, let's go into assignments. Manage food restriction. They're on lavish. Um, select food, lavish, turn off. Baby food? Stop eating the baby's food. Well, my people are going to starve trying to feed these friggin' babies. Guys, don't, don't make a lot of vat children at once unless you have a lot of food coming in. Feed the baby. There we go. As you were. Maybe worth getting... Yeah, that's true. The tox lungs. Oh, wait. Does the tox lungs also prevent lung rot or only the pollution type thing? Soul Sapper on a food binge. Great one to have, Soul Sapper. I'm actually tempted to arrest you. <laughs> they changed cloth mask already? Let's check. This fabric, which covers the wearer's mouth and nose from several layers of a textile, it is remarkably effective in reducing the effects of environmental toxins. Toxic environment resistance. How resistant the creature is. Protects the, against tox gas, rot, stink, toxic fallout, and polluted terrain. So it does, yeah. Do DLC worth buying? I think so, yeah. It's like two... It's like two and a half DLCs in one. But I'm biased, of course, so... I mean, I might... I might go into nutrient paste temporarily. It being mushroom paste will counteract it a little bit. Let's just get it researched in case I have to do it. They get a mood buff from eating mushrooms, so the minus four from the nutrient paste is a big deal. So much beer. Yeah, we'll trade some, yeah. We can probably start doing uh more day for the mood instead. And let's see here. Cassandra only hit once this time, that's good. I'm sure she's revving up. Nice tile. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a pretty standard mountain map, aside from the fact that uh, there's three geothermals right here, which is pretty awesome. In fact, I think this geothermal won't even get hit by breachers, so they mainly come from this side. So we have two geothermals that are basically breacher safe in a mountain base, which is pretty awesome. This one I probably won't be able to build because it'll just get hit by breachers, but we'll see. What's my favorite non-temperate forest biome? Boral Forest, yeah. Not, not a super easy map, but I like Boral Forest. All right, let's uh, temporarily switch to nutrient paste. As much as I didn't want to do it. Known bugs that haven't been fixed in the hot fixes. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think it's kind of tiring dealing with them. My only real problem—I don't have a problem like you know killing them. Usually, my problem with them is having to rebuild and clean up. It's annoying. All right, that'll help us for a little bit. So we're going to spin some meals. So we'll do the animal product one. Okay. What do you do with insect meat? So there is a trick to insect meat. If you're doing a normal run, you're not a tunneler, and your people hate insect meat, you can still get a mood buff off of insect meat by making it into fine or uh, lavish meals. So if you make the insect meat into a fine meal, the buff... The mood buff you get from fine meal is actually higher than the debuff for eating insect meat. So just make sure you set up a, a rule in your normal games, even if you don't like insect meat, unless you want to use it for chem fuel or trade it or something like that. But if you want to use it as food, just make it into either fine or lavish meals and it overcomes the debuff. So the reason we're not using the rooms yet, I don't want the extra wealth yet. Raids are already kind of scary, so I just haven't switched over completely yet. Right now, these are no extra wealth, like literally zero because they haven't smoothed anything, but I'll see what the quality is just smoothing the walls. Smoothing walls is basically no wealth, so let's see what that is, and we just leave the leave the floors as is, and we'll see what that gets to. Psychic Soothe, nice. nice one. The vat baby died. I didn't realize it was that close to starvation. Oh my gosh, that sucks. And we are the dwarves. We have to bury our our dead. I don't have a tomb set up yet, so. Sorry, baby. That sucks. It's the first baby death we ever had. I thought we had a little bit more time. We were just getting those mushrooms done. We almost had it. Man, people are going to be upset by that for a while. That's sad. 
That's sad. We'll be we'll bury you. Well, that sucks. <laughs> what? Soul Sapper, what's wrong with you? My rival, that baby, has died. What do you mean your rival? <laughs> He's got a mood buff because the baby died? How are you its rival? It was conceived in a petri dish and shoved in a vat. I hate that friggin' baby. He's eating all the mushrooms. <laughs> all right, well. Ooh, minus 20. Can't believe he was rivals the baby. It's ridiculous. He knew things about that baby. <laughs> so, I was not expecting that. People are going to be really unhappy about this death in the very first person I opened. Man, I'm happy that died. How the baby died? We didn't have enough nutrition in the third vat, unfortunately. And what sucks is we had just started bringing in new mushrooms. It was really close. I didn't realize it was that close. I thought we had... I thought we had a little bit more time. It's really unfortunate. Baby food. You'll deal with food. Okay. You can use hay. How efficient is growing hay for the for the babies? Why not use the high weakness UV? We have the normal weakness UV. If I use the high weakness, we're going to be really screwed if we need to go take care of a met cluster or if we need to caravan or if we need to like go somewhere and stop an off-map problem causer and we suddenly have the huge hit from the from that we're, we're gonna have a bad time so even just the normal uv hit is not great obviously we're so close to being done a baby formed in the growth vat that one's dead too that really sucks Wow. It had me name it, though. Like, what? Please name this before it dies. Yeah. Weird. Weird. Chicken join. <sighs> well, let's wait until we uh, have a steady, more steady supply of mushrooms coming in before I activate the other vats again. We have a baby crypt going. Yeah, it's crazy. Doors are turned to the stone. We could actually do that thematically in and make it so that we have a room where we can mine out a side of it and the roof collapses in the middle and we can put our corpses there and delete them that way. <laughs> Return to the stone. Also need to see if there's thin rock roof here, but that's going to screw with Breacher AI, so I doubt I'm going to dig any of that out. So we'll just see over here. Everyone's pretty happy, despite the fact that two children just died. So even that gets to slightly impressive. Okay, that's all I need to know. Base location's interesting. Under the mountain. Under the mountain. Hey, look, the chickens are coming home to roost. What map size? 325. I usually use 275, but we're in a bigger mountain, so. All right, they've roosted. They've come home to roast. Waits back on the menu. Okay, we'll put that there. We can burn that in case of emergency as well. All right, let's see when the last... Uh, we're going to get hit with Cassandra again here soon. We're in the 50s for well. 50,000s of well. We got to chill out a little bit. Chill out a little bit. This next raid might be brutal. But yeah, uh, Cassandra might just kill us. We're, we're like almost 60,000 wealth. And we don't have a lot of firepower, so... Oh, but no, we haven't, had any, we haven't had any incest in our games yet. Fortunately, it warns you. It's like, are you sure you want to make a baby with you? between these two people? They are brother and sister. <laughs> like, oh, my bad. Yeah, let's not do that. All dwarves are brothers and sometimes sisters. All right, that is off. So let's see, hash monkey. Oh my God, hash monkey. You see this? You see hash monkey out here running? Not running wild. What is it? Nature, nature running? Whatever it calls it. Get in. Convert this little hash monkey. Definitely need to get someone off to trade. We'll see what these children get. All right. Let's get some of this other research that we'll eventually use done. Fan slice is a nice one. Healthy vat birth. All right, let's see if we can get this one to, to actually survive. Right now, they're playing with it. It's set to go into the vat. 
There we go. Into the vat. Chat, any plans in the bedroom hallway? I do. I'm going to make it a giant um, uh, dining and recreation hallway. So, like, every other one is going to be a table. And then every other one, or everyone in between, will be the recreation. This will end up being the uh, hospital research construction, whatever. Hey, we can get a little bit of uh, shooting experience here. So, once this muffalo gets a little bit closer, where do you go? All right, let's go uh, just grab a little shooting experience here. Had one in the lottery. I'm gonna dump a million. That would, oh my god, I can't even imagine, man. Well, yeah, I do know you. I know you're serious, too. I don't even know what I would. I can't even imagine. Can't even imagine. Good luck. Good luck to both of us. Only thing you need to worry about with mountain bases. Uh, the only other thing is be careful not to overheat it. Aside from that, yeah, pretty much. Breachers and bugs are your two biggest problems in a mountain base, and obviously overheating. So we're going to be mechs. Yep, there's already been mechs. Do you mean Mechanitor? We won't have our own mechs. I already did a bunch of Mechanitor stuff on the previous playthrough. But if you mean enemy mechs, yes, there will be. Hey, what do you know? Did you summon these? Did you summon these? Oh, God, our first centipedes. We don't. We are not set up for that. Did you do this? Did you do this to me? Cassandra, why? All centipede. We got two centipede with miniguns, two blaster, and one friggin' inferno one. That's the one I'm really worried about. It'll, we could actually lose the run here. They re-added um, centipede gunners to the game. They were in alpha, but they were gone for a long time. That flag vest? Hey. Nope. <laughs> I just finished getting the helmets. We have a couple. We have a couple flak from raids, but not like... We haven't made our own. How do you level cooking without poisoning everyone? Psychite T. Psychite T only takes level two. Cooking, that's my preferred way to level it. Oh yeah, preparing warts, yeah, that's another one. The answer, as usual, is drugs. I'm gonna try this first, and then we might split over depending on how it's going. Or I can try to separate, oh God, okay. I need to make a leader after this. Leadership aura, combat command would have been clutch right here. Really worried about the flame centipede, honestly. Three centipedes? No, no, no. Five centipedes. <laughs> Three centipedes, I wouldn't be worried, actually. If the flame centipede gets a shot off from the corner, we could lose, yeah. That's a big problem. We'll see if we can get the flame centipede in first. I'm going to try to pull these two up with the baby there. As soon as these two get past here, we'll pull. Didn't work. All right, let's go. All that beer well. Oh, we separated the flame centipede. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. Coming out of the stun, they're going to shoot down there. If that happened with the flames that appeared, we're in trouble. going. I don't know why that one bounced that way. Might go, uh, be going down here to just destroy a structure. Go there. Alright, Flames and Pete's coming back. This means leaving, retiring. He's had a good life. <laughs> I'm gonna have to move them, actually. Just move over here. Ooh. 
Oh, I threw it at the right time. He didn't get a flame hit off. All right. Nice. Good time on that grenade. Pat myself on the back for that one. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? All right. All right. We're good. Thank you, children, for uh, for giving us some more DPS there. Uh, so we literally could have lost that. It, it looked like we couldn't have. It looked like we were overwhelmingly the favorite to win that. But if the flame centipede gets in there first or with the group, that's why I was trying to split it up with the child. If that gets in there and gets one flame shot off, we, we can lose 100%. Because if it hits and everyone panics, this is all steel. Like it can go downhill very, very quickly. So we need to get some uh, poppers the very least set up. Um, I was not expecting five centipedes already, so... A little, a little terrifying, a little terrifying. Uh, that went really well though. Yeah, that, uh, I was not expecting five centipedes. The flame centipede really could have screwed us over. And I think it's time that we replace these, unfortunately. We got a little bit of plastic from that, enough to actually uh, build those barricades in there to help if that happens again. So Rhino, we'll leave that grenade on you just in case. If you read this, subscribe. Uh, speaking of that, Reeve, I don't say that stuff enough, and I really, I really should. You might be like, why, why should you? When I look at my YouTube stats, something like 72% or something like that, last time I looked, of people that come back and watch multiple videos. So these are people that are actively coming back to the channel over and over. Don't subscribe to it on YouTube. And the description number, I mean, as long as, like, watching and stuff helps out the most, but the description number does actually matter for a few reasons. And the big one is companies use that as a metric to pay me more or less. That's one of the big ones. So if you're already watching on YouTube, especially if you watch multiple videos, um, it would be awesome if you would subscribe. It does help out. You know the drill. Um, I'd appreciate it. Smash that like button. There's all the force in your body. <laughs> What's the fastest way to level crafting from two? So crafting experience is gained when they are doing crafting, not when it's complete like some other things. So to level crafting, the easiest way to like grind it out, if you don't care about what they make, is to put them outside in a dark place or a cold place, whatever that makes them do the craft longer. So outside, cold, you know, blind, blindfolded, whatever, that makes them do the crafting longer. And then just give them something you don't care about that takes a long time, like plate armor, like wooden plate armor. And you can cancel it before the end if you want. Uh, if you're only doing it for experience, you can you can do it that way. Uh, if you want them to actually make something, you know, there's, I would suggest making something that you can sell even at, at low quality. But yeah, you want them to take as long as possible to do their craft because that's where they get the experience from. I know there are some things in the game where they get experience once the item is just finished, like as the item finishes. But with crafting, it's the entire process so. all right uh we're actually doing okay on mushrooms now so i think i can switch back to some meals all right all right uh so wild man wandered in let's check them out here lexan pessimist they're pretty and kind but they're down on themselves i've never met anyone like that before in my life it's like most people i meet i saw a, a study an advertising study that was basically saying that uh the most popular videos right now in general are eight second videos that past that people start losing attention at 12 seconds it's like holy crap none of those people are watching my youtube videos that's for sure <laughs> put a single 10 to 15 second segment of chair versus everything chat scrolling on the side <laughs> so i i will tell you that i do watch a lot of the short form videos but you know what they're for recipes and stuff like that i hate going to a recipe site and it being like friggin' their life story and six pages of, of of ads, and then you have to click next for every part of the recipe. Like screw that. But there's a lot of shorts videos that are just recipes. It's literally like combine this and this and this, and here's the measurement on the screen, and this is the outcome. I I watch those quite a bit. Those videos are for poop time. <laughs> Mad buffaloes. Uh, this is mass animal insanity. So that actually does count as a major event. Six Muffalo. I think I'm actually going to fight them so that we can get some more shooting experience. A regular section on the stream where I just rant about something. <laughs> you like those? Have you been here for a Greedfall rant? Haven't done one of those in a few months. I, I don't know why millennial is a catch-all phrase for, for like, young people. I'm a millennial. Uh, the oldest millennials are turning 40. 40-year-old 40 millennials. 
But it's millennials. Those are the ones propagating TikTok videos. All right, let's go get some uh, experience here. Children, you fire from the back, please. So, Muffalo can't cross the Plastial Barricade. I'm hoping that we'll be able to shoot them, though. <laughs> Muffalo are stopped by barricades because barricades count as fences, if anyone's wondering what's going on there. So, if you go into Animals Information, it'll say... Stopped by stopped by fences, and if it says yes, even manhunters are stopped. So like these bison, cool. oh. and you look, and I'll highlight it here. Blocked by fences, yes. So if it says blocked by fences, they also are blocked by sandbags and barricades, and even if they're manhunters. What was the worst thing that ever... So I've only been raided one time when I was AFK. Believe it or not, when I, I got up... It was against Cassandra, actually. I thought she went on cooldown, but I was off by about a half a day. I got up from my chair. I started walking towards the door, and then I heard the raid notification through my headset as I was about to leave the door, and I ran back in. <laughs> but I've only ever been raided one time while uh, while AFK with no pause. I gotta get someone traded off here. I'm just gonna have to take someone. Uh, I need, like, one pack animal. Donkey would be perfect. Oh, the donkey's actually close by to you. Good job, Ramnam. Look at you. Do you need to be over 18 to sell alcohol? No. <laughs> Alright, let's get a name for a donkey out of the animal naming queue. We haven't named a pet in a while, so let's uh let's use that here. This is so dumb. Sacrifamule, named by Zidian. Thanks, Zidian. Thanks. Okay, who do I need the least around here right now? Probably Soul Sapper, honestly. Sorry, Soul Sapper. Like, for right now, you're probably the one that is least needed. You can probably solo anything that comes your way as well. It's true, he was getting sick all the time earlier. That would suck. Right. Can't solo the plague. <laughs> all right. uh, I think I'm going to take Soul Sapper. I'm going to make him a bedroll. I don't want to send two people, no. So... I'll explain that. Um, so if you don't know, there's a trick, I guess I would call it, with caravanning. If you send a single person, a single animal, and less than 10,000 wealth, you will only ever get ambushed by a single melee raider or two small animals. That's it. It literally can't be higher than that. As soon as you send a second person, the ambushes get way bigger. We're talking like getting attacked by like 13 people and, or whatever, 8 people, 7 people, whatever. But if you send one person, one animal, and less than 10,000 wealth, the game will never hit that raid with more than one melee uh, enemy or two small animals. So it's... Uh, that's You'll see in my recent playthroughs, if you go back and watch any of them, that I almost always have a single caravan, a single person caravan going back and forth, and it's because it's so safe. Is one meal at a time for cooking experience? No, there's two reasons for one meal at a time. I haven't gone over it this playthrough, so I'll go over it. Uh, the reason why I do one meal at a time, there's two reasons. One... I don't want them to proc food poisoning and get all four meals at once if they're making it. So if we make one meal at a time, it's food poisoning, and we catch that or whatever, uh, someone eats it, whatever, we're not doing four. But another big one for me is that four meals at a time takes a lot more uh, work time. And if we get raided or an event happens or whatever, and I have to draft that person and pull them, and they were 75% uh, of the way expands. done, I don't get Brace any of the meals. Up. If I'm doing one at a time in that same a lot of time, I would have had three meals, but instead I have zero. It's more important against Randy in that sort of way because you can time it with Cassandra. But those are the two reasons I usually do 1x. And I generally just do drop in place and I have the shelves there. The reason why they're having to walk back and forth right now is just because this is filled up with them just dropping on floor. We'll fix that later. But yeah, that's why I like doing 1x. I used to do 4x all the time. Yeah, so they can pollute the entire stack. Yep, yep. Cassandra is very likely to do the one two punch kill thing that she's really known for. So the way that Cassandra works is she has a 10.6 day cycle. So a 10.6 day cycle, what does that mean? Well, for 4.6 days, she can attack you with up to two major events within 4.6 days. They can be really close together. They can be a few days apart. But on average, she attacks you with two events every 4.6 days. And then she goes on cooldown for six days where she can't attack you with a major event. So the one two punch that she's really good at is doing things like the first raid in that 4.6, Breach Raid. 
It opens your walls. Maybe you just barely survive it. Her second raid, massive like animal attack. It just goes right through the breacher hole. So there's the one-two punch from Cassandra is very, it's kind of predictable, but sometimes you just can't do anything about it, even though you know it's coming. All right, let's uh, extract this and then we're gonna hit the road, I guess. Get some of the rest of this wealth. Thank you.